In this video, we will be looking at topic seven of GCSE chemistry, and that is organic chemistry. Here are the subtopics we'll be looking at throughout this video. And as always, all of these notes will be available in my Etsy, which is linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy. First of all, we have hydrocarbons. Now the hydrocarbon definition is a very important thing to remember. It is simply any compound formed by hydrogen and carbon only. That will typically get you two marks in an exam and it is one of the easiest definitions because the name hydrocarbon basically gives away that it is made of hydrogen and carbon. The main type of hydrocarbon that you need to know about is an alkane. It has a general formula which looks complicated, CnH2n plus 2, but after some examples you will see that it is fairly straightforward. An alkane is a saturated compound which just means that each carbon atom has four bonds which is the maximum that it can hold. So effectively it is saturated, meaning that it cannot bond with any other things. And an alkane is known as a homologous series, which just means that it is a group of things that react in a similar way. So everything kind of has the same properties. On the right hand side we have some examples of alkanes. We have methane, ethane, propane, and there is also butane, which I've purposely left out, let me know what the chemical formula of butane would be if you can follow the pattern of the three here. Butane would be the one after propane. So you can see this CnH2n plus 2, although it sounds complicated, if n is 1, which is what it is for methane, there is 1C, and if you substitute the 1 into 2n plus 2, you'd get 2 times 1 plus 2, which is 4, so CH4. Effectively, for every carbon you have, times it by 2 and add 2. And you can kind of see it creates this formation with the ethane and the propane, where for every carbon you've got one above and below, and then right at the ends of each chain you've got a H as well, which is where the plus 2 comes in. As long as you can remember some examples of alkanes and some properties about them, you will be absolutely fine. And on the next page, as you can see on the left hand side, we have some triple only content, which are alkenes. Alkenes have a general formula similar to alkanes, but CnH2n, so you haven't got that plus 2 on the end. Alkenes, because of this, are unsaturated compounds, which means the carbon atoms can bond with other things if they come in contact with them, and they're represented by this CC double bond. Again, they are a homologous series, which just means they are a group that react in a similar way. Now, unlike ethane and propane and methane, this time, because it's an alkene, we have ethene and propene. So you can see the pattern with the ene ending and the ane ending for alkanes. Now, the ethene, as you can see here, instead of the H's on the outside, it's just CC and then the four H's and propene C3H6. Slightly different formation. Effectively, as long as you can have three C's and six H's on there, then you're all good. Hydrocarbon chain properties. Now, typically short chains are more desirable when it comes to real life scenarios. And the reason for this is they are more viscous, which means they're less runny. They're more volatile, which means they have a lower boiling point. So it's less energy to kind of heat them up or change the state of them. They are more flammable, again, less energy and they burn with a clean flame, so more sustainable in an industrial setting. And all of these properties are basically the opposite with a long chain. Next we have fractional distillation. All of these hydrocarbons we're talking about naturally do not come all separated out in nature. That would be a very handy thing to do. All of these things come from crude oil, which are effectively the oils that we find from things like fossil fuels that have formed in the earth for millions of years. Now because of that there are mixtures of all types of alkanes and alkenes and other things within those. So they are put into something called a fractionating column as you can see on the left hand side. Now the more purple it gets in my drawing the hotter it is and as you can see at the top it gets much cooler. Now the way this fractionating column works is virtually everything in this crude oil will turn into a gas as soon as it enters this. Anything that doesn't and has a higher boiling point than Whatever the temperature at the bottom of this column is will go out the bottom tube as you can see. Now the things with the highest boiling points will turn back into a liquid quicker. They will get caught in those bottom two pipes for example 
and come out as diesel oil or heavy fuel oil as an example. Anything else will continue rising until it reaches its boiling point of things like kerosene and petrol. They will get caught in the higher up fractions and again come out as a liquid. And finally, anything that doesn't turn back into a liquid, such as liquefied petroleum gas or LPG, will just come out as a gas at the top. But effectively, this is a very good way of separating all those things, just like we would have learned in separating methods in other topics within chemistry. As you can see, I've summarised this on the right-hand side in my own words as well. Next, we have a method called cracking. Now, cracking is a way of getting those longer chains of hydrocarbons into those more desirable short chains. And as the title suggests, cracking is effectively just taking the chain and snapping it. Now, that does require some energy because when you break a long chain of something, you're effectively just breaking the bonds. Now, here you're only going to be breaking a few bonds because you want to still maintain the structure of the smaller chains. But this will take some energy to do. So here is an example at the bottom where we have hexane, which makes butane and ethene. Now you'll notice we have an alkane at the start, the hexane. That is going to make butane, which is another alkane, a shorter alkane, and also an alkene. Now it needs to be this way round that it makes an alkane and an alkene, because otherwise you're going to have some missing hydrogens. So this is why it's good for those combined science students as well. Even though there's not much detail of them in your spec, you do still need to know about alkenes or a little bit about them. So definitely don't ignore them. And that is the end of organic chemistry. Thank you very much for watching. The next topic is chemical analysis. Like and subscribe if you found that useful and I will see you in the next one.